Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is a wiring and setup guide for the Montec Hyperflow AIO, a 360mm ARGB all-in-one cooler, which I'm going to show you how to install in a system which includes an Intel LGA 1700 socket motherboard, and also it, this is naturally being built in a Fantex case with a rear connect motherboard. But I'm going to show you all the logic you need for a standard installation, as well as the things to think about and break it all down for you. First of all, I'm going to get everything out of the box and show you what's included and talk about the important parts of what you need to know. Then I'm going to show you the wiring of the fans, the installation of all the parts, and where things plug in and connect later on. And I'm going to show you then how to swap out the fans if you need to. There are pre-included things like extra thermal paste, which you won't necessarily need, but there are some other highlights too. You see this has a number of nice things included, as well as little cable ties for the tubes. So you've got these plastic clips that go over the tubes to neaten the tubes up. There's also a really neat tool for installing the standoffs, which is simple and a very nice addition that I've not seen in previous AIO installs. And for this, obviously, we're using an LGA 1700 socket motherboard with an i9-14900K. So I'm going to show you what we're going to use here and abandon the AMD things. You'll notice, for example, this bag includes some AMD clips and standoffs on the left there, which we can just get rid of, but we do need these thumb screws on the right. So we're going to use those, and we're also going to use the LGA 1700 standoffs that are marked clearly in this bag here. Now these little things will screw into the motherboard, and then you will secure your cooler to it. The installation of this cooler is really straightforward, and interestingly, the wiring logic of the fans is quite similar to Fantec fans, so it does make it quite straightforward and easy. Then you have a bag full of tiny screws that we use to secure the radiator to the case. Now, included in the box is two different brackets for the rear of the motherboard, LGA1151 and LGA1700. We're going to use the LGA1700 for the newer motherboard, so obviously I'm using a Z790 motherboard in this build. And so this is the view of what we're going to need for that setup. So your four standoffs, your thumb screws, and your rear bracket, which has 3M tape on it, by the way, that you'll need to use to secure to the motherboard and make things nice and tidy. Now, the Montec cooler actually comes with the fans pre-installed, which, in theory, makes life a lot easier because they're pre-installed and set up and ready to go as exhaust fans. So they'll be pulling air through the radiator and pushing it out of the top of the case if you just installed them like this. You could leave them like this if you wanted to, as I said, but I'm going to remove them in a minute to swap them out. But the nice thing about them is they are all connected together. So you'll see all three fans are connected together. And then you've got a fan power connection and a 5 volt RGB connector, which is connect to the motherboard or wired up to a controller alternatively. And then you can easily power them and the power and the RGB on there all connected. So they're just all chained together, which makes the installation really straightforward and easy so that's nice and a similar logic at uh, the other end on the pump head as well so you'll see that this has a couple of different connections on it so we've got a fan power connection which goes to the AIO pump header and then you have a 5 volt RGB connection female and male so you pull the little cap off and you'll see one of them is a male connector that means you can actually connect the pump to the fans on the radiator and then to the motherboard and that way basically connect them all together so that you then have all of that lighting synced really easily. So for this is the display from the pump head and the RGB power for the fans all connected up quite simply. So I just want to show you the wiring for how that would work. So obviously CPU fan on the motherboard is in the top left here, air pump on the right. So you plug the fans that are on the radiator into the CPU fan header and then the pump into the AIO pump header. Uh, it's fairly straightforward there, but basically you're allowing the motherboard to control the fan speed of the fans on the radiator and obviously to be able to see the speed of that and the pump as well at the same time. And then we have the RGB connection. So you need to look for a 5 volt RGB connector on your motherboard, which is a 3-pin connector. On most modern motherboards, you have multiples of these to allow you to plug your cables in. You can see from the bottom of the motherboard here, for example, there are two available, but I also have one at the top. But the good thing about this is, as I've shown, there is a female and male connection, so you can actually daisy chain the fans and the pump together to connect those all up. 
So that does make life a little bit easier. And we've got similar logic as I'll show you with the Fantex fans as well. So don't worry too much if you haven't got loads of RGB connections available. Alternatively, you can get controllers which will allow you to plug in 5 volt connections to them and then connect up to your motherboard. I've done a separate guide on RGB fans that I'll link to in the description which might be useful if you have that problem. So with the cables here, obviously we have that male connector from the pump head. You can see it plugs in to the female one and then basically you've just got all of those fans and the pump linked together for the RGB connector that then plugs into the motherboard. You then control the RGB on those things with your motherboard software or alternatively with something like Signal RGB, which is a really neat tool that you can use to control and match up your fan RGB really easily. And then you've got that set up. So now we're going to go into the motherboard setup and installation. For this, I'm using the Rear Connect Tough Gaming BTF Wi-Fi motherboard here. So we're going to prep that and make sure it's ready for the cooler. For the CPU installation, we lift the little lever and then remove the latch and then we're going to carefully seat the CPU into the socket. Note there's a couple of notches at the bottom which you can line up and then gently seat it in there taking care not to drop it or squash it and then put that latch back over and the lever back down and that's now secured. Now for the back plate we need to remove the stickers on the rear of there. We're going to install this on the back of the motherboard. I find this easier to do now than it is later on. Technically you can access the back of the motherboard for this in this case, if you remove the SSD tray, but it's easier to do it now. So you just remove the 3M stickers from the rear of this back plate, and then it'll stick to the back of the motherboard, and you'll be then able to put the standoffs into it on the other side. So obviously this is the LGA 1700 socket one I showed you earlier on. This is for your cooler. You seat that over the rear of the motherboard and push it down, and obviously make sure the stickers a stick in that end nicely and that will then secure that down and then we use these four standoff screws with the small screw end going into the motherboard into those standoffs that we see it through from the back plate secure that in screw those four standoffs in there and this is where the little tool comes into play in a second so first of all just secure them by hand and then the little tool that I showed you earlier on which is that black ridge tube essentially sits over the top of these and then can be used to secure and tighten them up further, making sure they're nice and tight so that the cooler is seated well and doesn't come loose and has good contact with the CPU because you need to make sure that those two things are connected well together. Now for this, I'm actually swapping out the standard fans on this Montec cooler for Fantex fans, but only so they match the fans in the case. This isn't necessary to do, but I thought it'd be good to show how to do it in case you want to do something similar in your build. These fans are actually very straightforward to install. So if you want to swap out an alternative, you can use them as long as they have a five volt connection and a chassis fan connection. It should be fairly straightforward if you follow this guide. Like the Montec fans, obviously we've daisy chained those Fantex fans together, but we can use the same logic that we did for the Montec fans when connecting them up to the motherboard. So just remember that because we've got two connectors, a fan power and five volt RGB connection, you just connect the fan power connector to the CPU fan header on the motherboard and the five volt connector can obviously connect to the male RGB connection on the Montec pump. Then the RGB lighting will be synced on those. So swapping the fans out, you need to make sure the blades face the same way as the Montec ones do. And also think about where the fan cabling is going to go. So make sure the cables are on the same place as well, because you want to make sure you put those cables towards the rear. Obviously with these Fantec fans, the cabling isn't as neat as it was on the Montec fans, which had this single cables running across the fans were nice and flat. So it is going to require a bit more work in order to make it neater, which is something to bear in mind. But just make sure the orientation of the fans is the same. So you want the blades facing down into the case. And that will make sure that the air is exhausting through the radiator here and that the cables face off towards the rear. And then for the radiator installation, basically we're going to try and put this on the top. You'll notice that it's a bit awkward to get in. So what I found is if I push the radiator in so that the top left corner is above the pre-installed fan, angle it in there, and then it's much easier to get in. You can see it's a bit of a faff to get in otherwise. So you basically have to put it in at an angle and then just slowly and carefully push it up. It will go in there though. You don't have to force it, but it is worth sort of testing this beforehand. Now, the other thing is obviously because we put those Fantex fans on there, there's a lot of power cables that we're going to have to deal with. So first of all, I'd recommend before installing the radiator that you run those cables through to the rear. You can see there are a couple of holes 
at the top above the motherboard where you can run the cables through but we do have a lot of cables to basically get through those holes first of all don't forget that we need to plug the cpu fan cable in so on the this motherboard is actually at the top middle basically we're plugging those three fans on the radiator into the cpu fan header on the motherboard to make sure they're all powered by that and can be controlled by it that way when your cpu starts to get a bit warm the motherboard will send the signal to speed those fans up which will then cool it down a bit more but the other cables, basically the extension of all those additional cables and the 5 volt connection will need to be run to the rear. And this, as you can see, was a little bit of a faff because there's quite a lot of cables there now, or at least more than there was when we just had the Montec fans on there. But as you can see, it's still pretty easy to get that into place and then secured. Now, the next thing is securing it to the top of the case which requires those small screws in that tiny little bag to secure the radiator to the top of the case. So you can see them here. Now, I initially only installed two of these screws in place because what I wanted to do was make sure that the cables are run through to the rear because it's very easy to accidentally catch the fan cables in the gap between the case and the radiator or just have a bit of a mess going on back there. So if just secure a couple of these screws into place to, to hold the radiator there, and then you can go about tidying the cables a bit and then you can secure the rad. The other reason you might want to do this is you might want to look at the position of the radiator in the case and where it's sitting so you can reposition it slightly. If you secure all the screws at that point, you won't then be able to do it. But you can see obviously we've got a lot of cables coming through here, which essentially are already connected together. They just need to be maneuvered into a way that's kind of neat. And then when you're happy with that, then you can go about finishing off installing all those tiny little screws on the top of the radiator. So those will then screw into the top and secure it fully in place up there with ease. And then we're installing the pump onto the CPU. Notice that this already has thermal paste pre-applied to it, and that's why that plastic cap is in place to protect. So you don't need to worry about the thermal paste. You can just take that off, and now we can seat it down over the standoffs we installed earlier on. So you can see the Montec logo in the bottom right corner, tubes in the right hand side, gently seat that down over the top. And then we're going to secure it with the four thumb screws in the corners. Now these take some tightening, but I'd recommend putting them on by hand first and then tightening with a screwdriver. And you're doing that corner to corner. So I'd recommend going diagonally, bottom left to top right and secure that way. And that way you'll have even pressure across it and then just repeat the process bottom right, top left and use the screwdriver until they won't turn anymore. Don't force it, but just make sure they're tight so there's good contact between the pump block and the CPU. And then obviously we've got those other cables. So the fan cable goes to the AIO pump header, and then you have the female and male RGB connections from the pump, which we can daisy chain onto the fans, as I said earlier on, and make sure at least one of the connections, either from the fan or from the pump, is connected up to the motherboard's 5R RGB connection and then both lots will get that RGB. So here you can see me using the female and male connectors here just to make sure those are all connected up nicely and we have the power that we'll need for that later on. And then that's that sorted out but we do have this mess of cables to deal with and make sure all the connectors are connected up and then go about tidying them. Unfortunately, we do have a lot of cables at the back now, and you may want to tidy those up a bit as much as you possibly can in the rear there. But then I'm just gonna power it on and make sure everything's working. We haven't got the GPU in yet, but as you can see, when we power it on, all the fans are spinning, all the RGBs lighting up, and everything's working as expected. So that's good, just test boot that. Hopefully that's given you some useful insights into how to set up and install this all-in-one cooler with the various options available, including putting different fans on it. I would recommend testing it out in Windows to make sure everything's running smoothly by benchmarking it. But you should find that it runs very nicely because it's all controlled by the motherboard, so you don't need to worry about downloading any extra software specifically for the motherboard. Just make sure you get some RGB software to control the lighting. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend, you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.